Hello, this is another quick tip on general purpose functions that you might want to use. Uh, and this follows from a recent video where I showed an expert for Bollinger reversion. I have it open here on the screen. Uh, and there was this line where volume equals normalized double. Now this is because I'm calculating volume in some cases as a percentage of the equity. And that may mean that I come up with a volume that doesn't have the correct number of decimals or isn't a valid volume for the symbol that I'm trying to trade. So I added this line, normalized double volume, comma two, and I put a comment in at the time. This is a hack. It only works if the volume increment is 0.01. So I was trading on currencies, and so this works fine because the currency volumes were all 0.01 going upwards in increments of 0.01. But as you probably know, not all symbols have a volume size that begins at 0.01. There are quite a few that begin at 0.1 and some that begin at 1. So there are two problems with this simple approach. First is that not all symbols, as I mentioned, have two digits, uh, but you'll still find a lot of people who will then attempt to determine the number of digits for the instrument and still use this and just adjust this number of digits. That is also wrong because not all instruments have a volume that begins at one or 0.1 or 0 0.01 and they don't all increase by 1 or 0.1 or 0.01. So there's actually a more complex way of calculating this. Um, and it is more complex, but once you've written the function, you can just reuse it again and again. So you might as well get it right rather than use a quick approach like this. I just used this in the earlier demonstration because I didn't want to confuse the video, which was about the Bollinger reversion, with how to perform this kind of function. So. Let's flip over and I have a script where I'm going to show how to write the function to effectively normalize volumes. And here is my test script. Uh, I'm starting out with a list of symbols. I have four symbols, Euro, Dollar Yen, Gold, and UK 100. They each have different minimum volume sizes. Uh, and then I have a volume list that I'm going to test against each of those. 1.2345, 98765, and 0.0005. And so then I have a loop. I'm looping through the symbol list. I'm looping through the volume list. I'm getting the symbol, the volume. I'm getting the current price with this MQL tick and symbol info tick. And I'm just getting the ask price because I'm only running this quick test just for buy. I'm not trying to do it for sell. And then I'm attempting to open the position. So let me just compile that. And then I'll run it and you can see the results. So when I run that script, I get script loaded, and then I get failed instant buy, all with invalid volume. So the volumes that I have in that list of volumes are all invalid. So what I'm going to do is introduce here I'm going to call a function that I'll write called normalize volume. Let me just get rid of this to give more space. Uh, where I pass in the volume that I had calculated here and the symbol. So first I've captured three critical pieces of information. The min is obviously the minimum volume that can be traded for this symbol. And the max then is obviously the max that can be traded for this symbol. But then there is also step. And this tells you how much you're able to increment the volume by, so the steps. So it's possible, for example, to have a symbol that has a minimum volume of two and a step of 0.5. So you can go from two, 2.5, three, and so on. Uh, and that's exactly the case that is not catered for by using a simple normalized double with number of digits. Now I need to add another argument to this. Now first thing I've done here, I've calculated a step count and that's a double. 
and it's just the original volume divided by step. So step is the size of a step. My original volume is the volume that I passed in here that I want to normalize, and then I get a step count. Now at this point, I'm going to add another argument to the normalized volume because I actually want this step count to be an integer, not a double. Uh, and I don't want to just take the integer value of dividing the original volume by the step. I want to allow that to be rounded up or rounded down or simply rounded off. So I'm going to add another argument here. Rounding equals zero by default. And what I'm going to say is if rounding is one, then I'm going to round up. If rounding is minus one, I'm going to round down. And a zero is just normal rounding. And in that case, I can change the double step count to int step count. So using the ternary operator here, if rounding is equal to zero, then the result should be the math round of original volume divided by step. If it's not zero, then if it is less than zero, I'm going to get the math floor, and the only remaining option will be rounding is greater than zero, and then I want the math seal. So that's how I get the rounding up, down, or just rounding off. And then to get the actual normalized volume, I have a count of the number of steps. I have the size of a step. So that volume is the count of the steps multiplied by the size of the step. But that's not all. I also need to compare that volume to the minimum and the maximum. So the maximum is simple. If the normalized volume is greater than the maximum, then I simply set it to the maximum. But there's a decision to be made then if it's less than the minimum. Do you want to trade the minimum or do you want to trade zero, or effectively not trade? So I'm going to add another argument here. So minimum zero, and I'm going to say if that's true, then if the minimum is, or if the calculated value is less than the minimum, then we'll return zero. And if that's false, then I'll return the minimum. So I've mixed the ternary operator here in with a simple if condition. So if normalized volume is less than min, then the normalized volume equals if minimum zero, zero, else min. I'll just print the result here. I do have a mistake here. And that should be it. I can simply return this normalized volume. So at this point, I know that it doesn't exceed the maximum. It is not less than the minimum, unless I've said that I want a zero, and then it's the responsibility of the calling function to decide that a zero was returned and not trade. And I know that it is a value that has the correct step so that it's not an invalid volume in any way. Uh, if you look back up, at these, 1.2345 is greater than the minimum, less than the maximum, and 1.23 might be correct, but once I added that 4.5, that's incorrect. So I'm also getting this to the correct step. So I'll compile that again. I'm getting a warning loss of data converting double to int. That's because these math functions, round, floor, and seal, although they're uh, rounding to an integer, they return a double value, and I only want an integer. Um, I'll just make that a double. It won't hurt. So I'll run it and we'll look at the results. I'm getting a trade disabled error on UK100, but at least I don't have an invalid volume error. And everything seems to have gone through. I did get a requote on uh, XAU USD. Again, it's not an invalid volume, it just means that the price was out of date. If I look at the journal, trade disabled on UK100. Everything's fine. Uh, and back to this experts tab. 
you can see if I look at the ones that had no issues, uh, EURUSD 1.234 was normalized to 1.23. Um, gold 9.87 was normalized to 9.88. So 876 rounded up to 88. Uh, 1.23 or 1.234 rounded down to 1.23. So this has done all the right things. Go back to the code here. This function is a lot more than simply saying normalize double to a certain number of digits, but this will give a correct answer. Once you've written this function, and I wouldn't include that print statement in your real function because if you do pass in a null symbol, you'll get a strange result. Um, but this function will just work for you then forever. So you might as well write it once and write it properly rather than take a shortcut. I hope this has been useful to you. If it has, remember to click the like button. If you want to see more like this, click subscribe and then click the bell icon to be notified when we release the next video. Thank you for watching.